biomechanical principles. So this is a nice review of a lot of the stuff that we've covered. And so just to clarify, first, when you're going to analyze something from using biomechanical principles, you need to know the purpose of the movement. Is it maximal? Is it a, a vertical jump to your max? Is it submaximal, an easy run? Um, so some examples, maximum horizontal speed, maximize your jump height, throw a ball fast, throw a ball accurately. So it may not be as fast as you can, but you need accuracy. Then um, which movement or task are you going to analyze from the whole body perspective or a joint, um, joint or segment perspective? Just to remind you what the six um, fundamental movement patterns are, I think this is a very interesting way to analyze movement, especially a motion that you're not familiar with. So look for a squat or a lift, a lunge within that movement sequence, a twist, a push or pull, gait, um, carrying, running, walking, and then maintaining balance. So. We reviewed a few of these, but you need proximal stiffness for distal mobility. Okay, this is an argument for quote unquote uh, training your core, right? You want your scapula to not slide all over the place, so you have appropriate and and functional glenohumeral joint movement. You do not want your pelvis to tear it anteriorly or posteriorly, um, but you want enough strength in your abdominal and your rectus spinae and your hip flexors and extensors for that matter to kind of lock these um, mobile joints um, down, if you will. Uh, you need to consider the summation or continuity or coordination of your joint forces and torques. And many times you want to produce linear impulse, right? This could be a, a purpose of the motion. So breaking a board, right? You are kind of starting from your feet, you're generating momentum all the way up with this extra pronation right before impact, which is maximizing the momentum. You want to maximize the impulse on that board. However, you do not want the proximal part of your body. So I'm going to look at the scapula during a punch from that for this example to move, right? You want all the momentum going forward into your fist to break that board. So you're moving the fist, it has a mass times velocity, you want a large impulse on the board, that's why they always talk about punching through the board so you don't have some sort of um, reflexive uh, slowing down. But if the scapula is not stable, does not have proximal stability, it will move and absorb some of that impulse by movement. So if it moves posteriorly, all of a sudden that is taking away, that is using some of the momentum to create that motion um, that should have been applied to the board. Another um, thing is just too much retraction or protraction. Right? You don't want to kind of completely protract during many movements. Sometimes protraction is necessary, but not excessive. Um, continuity or summation of joint forces. We talked about the triple extension, plantar flexion, knee extension, hip extension for jumps. Doesn't seem to apply to running, right? You have plantar flexion, um, knee extension, and um, actually an eccentric contraction of your hip flexors during most uh, running movements. But you do want to, for a maximal jump, you do want to sum the ankle, knee, and hip joint torques. And that would then, by summating these joint torques, you would apply the largest impulse to the ground that you could. The maximal impulse will result in the maximum momentum. Momentum is mass times velocity. Therefore, your takeoff velocity would be maximal in the top um, figure and not in submaximal in the figure B. All right, again with impulse, so here's a force times time curve that is an impulse, kind of like a ground reaction force for running, and it is the impulse of the blade on the water, right? So you're maximizing the time over which you're applying a force. You want that force to be high over a long period of time to really optimize that impulse. That impulse will create a momentum on the boat. <coughs> This is just um, some tips for good technique. 
showing you know how you put the blade in the water to create maximal impulse. Also, since we um, we reviewed the spine, most of the joint motion is coming at the hip. You don't see a lot of spinal flexion extension that could uh, um, not benefit you in the long run. So um, as always, a neutral spine.